Hey, everybody, and welcome to another College Hacked Q&A. Today, I have with me Dr. Lauren Daly. Hello. And our wonderful College Hacked intern, Noah Godwin. Hiya. All right. I am glad that you guys are here. Uh, we've got a lot of questions lined up, uh, and I'm just going to jump in with one real quick. Uh, Jesse X 6 pn says, so many WGU comments. A lot of people do comment about WGU on the channel. I'm 100% certain any recruiter with a brain will discard your application with a degree from, from WGU. And that's not so much a question as it is a conflagratory statement. Uh, <laughs> a initial bit, yeah. responses. What are we thinking? Ouch. Uh, I mean, I understand where they're coming from, especially on YouTube. I feel like WG is one of those online schools where you see a lot of people like documenting their journeys, whereas really with anything else, most people like sort of keep themselves with it. So like with its notoriety, I feel like online school just has a bad rep for some people, but I don't think that's how it'll end up in practice, especially like I've seen a lot of success stories with WG of people making like serious cash and having it go really well. So what do you think yeah. about that? What do you got, Lauren? Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm pretty sure that that person just maybe has a limited understanding of WGU. Maybe they know a few <laughs> bad things about it or things that people think are bad, like the proctored exam system that everybody kind of complains about. But it's actually one of the best programs out there for computer science, for example. It's got some pretty awesome nursing options yeah. with um, satellite locations in different states and places to make your dreams come true. So, I mean, I, are there bad things about it? Sure. But I think that there are definitely situations where it's a good recommendation to go there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't really see any recruiters throwing out WGU applications. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's not happening. I mean, maybe there's like one recruiter that got burned once, like they hired somebody from WGU and they just did a bad job of hiring. And so like, yeah, screw ups, graduate from WGU too. And so maybe there's like some recruiter who got burned before uh, and they don't want to take stuff from WGU anymore. But that's going to be the exact same with every other school, except for, you know, some of the Ivy Leagues where people will give it a chance yeah. just because it sounds like money. One thing I'll say in WGU's defense that a lot of people don't consider, WGU doesn't have free electives. You actually take more major area courses at WGU than you take at almost any other school. Like you are actually learning more lessons and getting more content in a WGU degree than at like like 95% of schools out there. So Jesse doesn't really know what they're talking about. And uh, I wouldn't be worried about a WGU degree, guys. I will say uh, real quick, uh, just by way of like housekeeping and everything before we jump into the next question, that uh, all of these questions are coming from our YouTube comments. And some of them are four or five, three months old because we basically go through the list of comments when we're prepping these videos and we go from the place we left off last time and we just pick comments to throw onto the list to talk about and to go through. So um, it might take a minute for people to see their questions show up, but we go through every single one. And we don't answer every single one because a lot of them are copies of each other's or very similar or ones that are just like too personal for us to answer. Uh, but if you guys have questions for us or just things you want to say, conflagratory statements that we can react to, uh, just throw those in the comments and we will eventually, we will either answer uh, or respond here um, to every single one, or at least at the very least read it. So we got some rapid fire-ish questions. So anybody who knows the answer, I almost feel like we could do like a game show. That would actually be pretty cool. Matt Brown 5902, video, yeah. does UMPI go with a pass fail system or is it a GPA based? Cliff, you actually used to teach at UMPI. So you would definitely yeah. answer this question. I'll take this one. UMPI is GPA based. Uh, and so the cool thing with UMPI is because they're competency based, they're like, hey, we got to be a little bit harder than other schools because we want to prove that people actually know the material. And so at a lot of schools, you pass a class if you have a C. At UMPI, you can only pass the class if you have a B. And so you're guaranteed to graduate from UMPI. Well, I guess you're not guaranteed because you could get an F, have to retake the class, and that F could drag your GPA down. But if you pass a class at UMPI, that means you got a 3.0. And so if you don't fail any classes, you're guaranteed to get at least a 3.0. Uh, but it would be very, very easy to get higher. Like it's it, it's it's a very good situation. Uh, next question, 555125. Kevin, does anyone know if Thomas Edison has stopped accepting Sophia credits? I feel like this might be a question for me, but does anybody know the answer? They I have not. think they have. I know Excelsior has set up some new requirements or like changed their policies regarding transferring. And WGU has always had stuff where like you can't transfer in credits after you've already enrolled. But with yeah. Thomas Edison, I'm pretty sure it's still pretty good in terms of transfer friendliness. Would you concur, Lauren? 
Yeah, I've done some sessions in the past week or so, and their uh, curriculum should be finalized by now. So barring any freak accidents where they are going to continue to update curriculum past what a deadline should be for the fall start, um, they should have everything up to date and the guide still exists for everything. So I'm going to assume that that's a yes. So with Thomas Edison, they're not usually as open about their Sophia acceptance. So a lot of people have assumed that they don't accept Sophia. Um, they basically just make you wait until I think basically what happened is I think a lot of people would email Thomas Edison and be like, hey, will these Sophia courses apply? And Thomas Edison would be like, uh, yeah, what are you going to do, like 10? And the student would be like, I'm going to do like 30. I'll be back in uh, six months and then I'm going to get a degree yeah. from you guys. And Thomas Edison was like, uh, I want some more money. And so I think what they basically are saying is like once you're applied and enrolled, then they'll tell you their equivalencies for Sophia. But a lot of their other equivalencies are out there. Uh, JMJE7SN, what happens if you don't pass a class? And this is at UMPI. Do you just retake it, milestone included, or does it count as a bad grade? Uh, when you finish a class within a session, do you get to register for more right away? I'll take this one real fast because, again, I taught there. Um, if you don't pass a class at UMPI, you get the F, and then you have to retake the class. And retaking the class does not get rid of the F. It just, that F is going to be, you know, a permanent part of that transcript. So you want to try to avoid failing it uh, because, yeah, then the, you have to wait till the next term to retake it. So, you know, if you would have finished in term one, but you fail a class, now you for sure have to pay 1500 bucks for term two. Um, so that's not great. Uh, but once you do finish a class, even if you fail it, you do get to jump right into another one, unless it's like the eighth week. And then they say, well, you know, you don't really have time to finish another one. So, so hold off. Cliff, you want to talk about in addition along that same vein, I get asked a lot what happens if you're still taking a class when the term ends. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, that does count as a fail, like you did not complete it. And so that is a failure. So you don't like if you're really close to finishing a, a semester, like you're, you know, it's week six in a day or week, sorry, week seven and six days, uh, you might not want to start that next class and just wait and, and have the time to pass it in the next term. Does that progress transfer over or do you have to restart from the beginning? Ugh, that is a really good question. I don't know the answer to based on what I know. Oh, actually, well, yeah, because if you started it, then you just fail, which means you do have to start mm -hmm. over. So, yeah, um, good question, but I do not think it it transfers over. That was UMPI, right? Or TSU? Yeah, UMPI. Okay, so for any of you uh, going to UMPI, make sure to maybe leave some extra time in your end of the semester so you can finish those courses and not have to retake them. Yeah, think really hard about whether you want to start a class at the last minute. Good point. <laughs> uh, Jim Spence, he says, and this is like a celebratory one for the most part. Oh, no, no, it's actually, he's asking for advice. Um, I'm finishing at Thomas Edison, but realized after transfer eval, I am one semester hour short at 15 credits of the 16 semester hours needed to avoid the tuition residency waiver fee of $3,000. Uh, if I add another course that's 18 for a term, which would need an override and it's a lot of work, uh, any ideas? And I remember Lauren, you and I were talking about this question when we looked at it last, uh, that the fact that he asked this question like five, six months ago is really unfortunate because he's probably already figured something out. You know, maybe I responded to him in a comment on YouTube. I hope I did for his sake. But the easy answer for what he's looking for is the there's like a, a one credit Jane Austen class. There's a couple other one credit classes at Thomas Edison, but the one credit Jane Austen is, is a really good go-to. There's like two Jane Austen class, so make sure you're choosing the one credit one. Um, the other thing was that you don't have to pay the 3,000 uh, residency waiver fee for 16 semester hours. It said if you, it's, you, you pay the 3,000 residency waiver if you're going to take fewer than 16 courses at Tom, or 16 credits at Thomas Edison. You pay that three thousand so that you can transfer in one hundred and twenty four or one hundred and fourteen credits, and then just take six credits at Thomas Edison. You're graduated. That is, I, I think maybe he didn't quite understand the process. Um, I think so the, too. The application for you guys out there is that if you've got like a hundred and thirty hours or some crazy number of transfer credits from a previous school, or because you just went on a Sophia binge and you have so many, or a Study.com binge, you know, you could possibly pay that waiver and then just take twelve credits or twelve weeks worth of credits at thomas edison to just graduate if you're willing to pay that uh, that extra three thousand graduate me fast fee uh, jahan zabamed says do you give consultation to international students and lauren is nodding yes emphatically yes we definitely do yeah, definitely. easy question um lauren uh top well okay weird question uh, i'll ask it differently it's just off the top of your head what are what are three countries besides the u.s that you've consulted people from 
Oh, there's so many. Saudi Arabia has been a lot more, a lot more recently. I don't know if they're all friends. I think they're telling each other about us, which I love. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have had uh, Ireland. I have had Canada. I know I've met with people from Belarus, from Aruba, from I think Peru, and uh, then Mexico for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. So really everywhere. Basically, yeah. Trying to collect them all. (laughs) <laughs> we really are. Even people from China. I think there was somebody who was teaching English overseas in China who who I recently met with. Uh, Hyper 4823, what is the cheapest college? This is a, a subjective question. So um, it I'm really gonna let, does depend. Yeah. Let's go Noah first and then Lauren and then me. In your opinion, what is the cheapest college? Off the top of my head, UMPI is a really good all-rounder. The... Uh, Main downside there is their degree choice. They have not the largest selection of degrees. WGU, honestly, can be super duper cheap. You can complete it in one term. It's just really difficult. Um, And you also have to sort of plan ahead of time because, as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, you can't transfer in credits after you've already enrolled. So you have to like know that you're going to jump WGU, WGU, and then do Sophia credits. And it's, it's more com- complicated, but you can make it work for a really cheap. SNHU is also pretty cheap, just in terms of like dollar per credit. Yeah. Do you know any others, Lauren? I would say UMPI is the least expensive by far, just because of yeah. you can always get down to 10 classes there pretty much. I shouldn't say always, but almost always. Uh, whereas WGU, you're guaranteed to be taking more credit hours there with them. So not that that increases the cost because of the whole time chunking, but I think you can get done combination of fastest and cheapest at UMPI. That would be my answer. You're both wrong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, technically, <laughs> University of the People is the cheapest because they offer free tuition. I didn't realize it was a trick question. (laughs) (laughs) But they get you because then it's like 120 bucks or something like that for the final exam. So you end up spending more than you could get away with spending at UMPI or WGU. And to your guys' points, UMPI, $1,500 for eight weeks. And so you could spend only $1,500 at at UMPI if you hack everything else. Uh, But technically, WGU costs an average of $21 a day for their business degree. And UMPI comes out to like $26 or $27 a day. So if you want six months to get your courses done, WGU is cheaper. If you are ready to just bust out the final 30 credits or 31 credits in eight weeks, then UMPI is cheaper. Um, Another one that I think is noteworthy, just to add on, yeah. if you do want a degree that is sort of less common, um, TSU, Thomas Edison State University, yeah. can be a good um, option sometimes because similar to similarly to uh, WGU, they can sometimes off, op- operate on like a term-based system where you only pay for the term yeah. and not the individual credits. But I think Especially... as the other guy was talking about, he only took um, a certain number of credits and like needed to take more to eligible for that yeah yeah exactly so if if you are looking for like especially like a liberal arts degree or some other weird ones that thomas edison offers you can and take a certain number of classes per term you can actually get a discount um i don't know if it gets as cheap as snhu which if you're looking at a per credit basis is probably the cheapest at 230 no sorry 330 now they've updated the price yeah so they also have a really great selection as well just not quite there and good selection, but they'll only let you take two classes at a time, so they're not winning any awards for speed. Does SNHU only let you take two classes at a time? Yeah, SNHU will only that. let you. Yeah, you're a max. You're a minimum of forty weeks. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, like, don't let me take more than two classes. That is crazy. Yeah, that is ridiculous. It, there's got to be some sort of an override or an exception you can ask for. I don't know. I they seem uh, really hard on it. That's the thing that they're kind of like known for. So yeah. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. There you have it. SNHU just got a whole lot slower. Uh, All things Brianna 6114. Hi, I never see you speak on WGU. Do you not like it? Or is Thomas Edison better? And uh, yeah, we actually just released a WGU review. Uh, Basically, there was just so many YouTube videos on YouTube talking about WGU. I just didn't want to get drowned out by everything else. And WGU is kind of like the thing that's currently the the popular thing and i've never been i've been more like the alternative rock kid than the pop music kid mm-hmm. and so i wanted to talk about these other options that i thought were slightly better in some ways um but yeah no no problem with wgu like them so for some people thomas Edison's better but almost always wg will be cheaper for u.s citizens it's um, funny because you're the pop song professor <laughs> i have another youtube channel i don't know paradox uh, there 
<laughs> yeah. As soon as I gave that example, I was like, oh, man, I don't want to call You knew I was going to call you out. <laughs> yeah. I felt Lauren just ready to, to take me out there. That's me. Uh, Jonathan Robles, 7377. I need to ask this. What STEM degree... Oh, and I think this will be a really good question for you, Noah. What STEM degree do you see that is the most hackable? One that's not psychology, business, or tech-related? Or would that fall under a Chipotle degree that pairs up with some kind of application? This is a three-part question. Noah, I want you to answer the first part. What STEM degree do you think is the most hackable? Well, you said one that isn't psychology, business, or tech-related. So Ignore that. that. Kinda... Ignore that. That's Let's... Let's answer the question in its best form, and then we'll we'll pare that down. It really depends on what you mean by a STEM degree. I feel like you're fishing for an answer that I don't have. <laughs> um, I mean, Chipotle degree can definitely be fast, especially at places like uh, UMPI. I think LUO, uh, TSU might have one too. Yeah, um, but um, like a particular major. Is there a major you can think of that science, technology, engineering, or medical that goes really fast? Uh, WGU has a pretty good cybersecurity and computer science program that can be really fast. Is that what you're looking for? I, you got also, it. Also, business is incredibly hackable and almost all universities, especially online ones, offer a business degree. So it really just depends on the university. But WGU, if you want something fast, cheap, and want to put some effort into planning it out, yeah, uh, I think that's a great option if you're interested in like anything tech related, like especially most... cybersecurity. Oh. They yeah. have an amazing, like super duper, not like ivy league but like one of the best online cybersecurity degrees i really think it's honestly kind of underrated hmm. I, we need to dive into that in a future video for sure but what you said about computer science computer science is going to be the most hackable because it's basically the most generic tech degree so if you're going into a tech field that doesn't require a specific computer degree but you want a computer degree you want to graduate fast at almost every school, computer science will be the most hackable. The reason I didn't want to go into that second part of the question, I don't know if you figured this out, Lauren, psychology and business aren't STEM subjects. No. They are, that's a social science. They're both basically social science. They're like social science and like pre-professional, basically. Yes. Just for anyone who uh, is not familiar, because not everybody knows this, but STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. So you're looking at very, uh, you know, science-based um, degree majors. So yeah, psychology and business would not necessarily fall into those. <laughs> um, psychology yeah. is technically a science, but really I feel like it's more research related. Or... No way, you're going to divide the internet. We're going to break the internet. <laughs> you can't say the psychology. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Lots of people would fight you on that, but I agree with you. <laughs> That's a fair point. It's, it's a social, well, is it a social science? Yeah. Okay. It's what there's that like that XKCD XCKD whatever that comic strip is. What are you talking? About? Okay, I'm not I'll sure. have to share it at some point. But they were basically <laughs> making the point that psychology is just applied biology, basically. Oh, and biology I science. With that. <laughs> no. Yeah. So anyway, computer science is the best for that. And then if you're if in doubt, just go with a Chipotle degree and throw some computer classes in there. TB4 Jesus two four seven. Does it matter if a school's individual Amazing, programs yeah, have accreditations such as ACBSP? And ACBSP, I need to look up what that exactly stands for. I know I think it it's is. it's a business. It is, yeah. Um, there's three big ones right now, and this is the Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs. And I can Lauren, take this one if you want. Oh, yeah, go for it, man. So ACBSP is one of the most common business credentials. I've seen it with like almost all of the business majors I've looked at. So I think it's relatively easy to obtain. So I wouldn't say it's like required per se, unless Lauren, you know something else. But I would say if they don't have it, definitely something to look into because um, most of them do. Yeah. So, uh, and for anybody who's kind of lost, and I'm going to kick this back to you, Lauren, because I think you have a really nuanced perspective on this. Good setup, good pitch, Noah. Um, ACBSP and a lot of this other stuff is basically if somebody has a business school and they want other people to think their business school is legit, they already have a regional accreditation ostensibly. They might say, hey, yeah. you know, accrediting body for business schools, just come and tell me that my business school is super cool. And so some schools have that, some some business programs don't. 
Um, but Lauren, if, if you want to take the question from there. Obviously, your school should always be at minimum regionally accredited because that you just don't want to mess with any schools that uh, don't have that. It's also great if it's nationally accredited and has additional um, accrediting bodies that it has submitted to. So ACBSB, for example, um, they have specific rules and hoops you have to jump through that makes it a worthwhile accreditation. So part of that is usually like, you know, 50% of your professors, including adjuncts and full-time resident professors have to have at least 10 plus years of experience in business, stuff like that. So you're looking at higher quality experience would, would certainly be the assumption and the hope. That's kind of what that accreditation is going for. But yeah. so anytime that you have schools that are accruing lots of individual program accreditations, that's a good sign because it means that they have a team of people that are literally looking for hoops to jump through to make sure that their school is as good as it can be. So it's a good sign. The only time that I know of that not having a CBSP or something like a, a individual program accreditation, which this only really applies to like social work, business and nursing programs. There's, there's probably a few others, but like, those are the three that I've heard of the most. Um, the only time that something like this really can backfire is like, say you graduated from a school that didn't have this accreditation and then you wanted to go get a master's degree at like an Ivy league school that there are some Ivy league schools, not all, but some that will say, uh, Hey, your school and your business degree needed to have been ACBSP or, or whatever accredited. And mm -hmm. if it's not, that makes it harder, if not impossible for you to get into that master's program. Um, you're still going to be able to get into 95% of master's programs, but just not like those, those top 5% in some cases. So. Yeah. The only other thing I'd say besides that is that sometimes if companies are sponsoring you and uh, they're giving you tuition reimbursement or scholarship to go back to school, a lot of times they might require that the program be accredited in a certain way. So that's mm -hmm. the only other time I've seen it come up. Yeah. I'm going to speed through a couple of these because I know we've got some really good questions at the end that I want to spend a little bit more time on. All things Brianna 6114, uh, who we've actually heard a question from already. She says, do you think SNHU is a good school to hack? Absolutely, though apparently it's slower than I thought. <laughs> um, Aaron Redis, 4020, I love your videos. You're an unsung hero. I think he's speaking to the toll team here. Uh, under your direction, I was able to transfer 81 credits into my degree program. I completed the courses, 27 of them to be exact, across the span of two months. I think that's pretty impressive, and it nice. absolutely is. Aaron, if you watch this video, congratulations to you and all the people in your life who supported you through that. And if you want to do an uh, interview for the channel, we'd love to chat with you and maybe get you up here on screen. Uh, in fact, please reach out to me, Clifford at collegehack.com. Let's say make something happen. Kara Hamill, 3657. How do you get a job from LUO once you get the degree? Lauren and I were talking about this one. And the joke here is that if you want to get a job from LUO once you get the degree is you go down to Graves Mill Road, walk into the call center and tell them that you have a pulse. And then you got a job because basically like a ton of people who graduated from Liberty, like their first job out was to go work in the call center. And they were constantly having people get, you know, new jobs elsewhere or quitting or whatever. So they were always hiring. I almost ended up in uh, online advising at one point, actually. Nice. Would you agree with that? Is that true to your experience, Lauren? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't think it's super hard and not in a bad way because it's a huge operation. It's at least 112,000 students and then all of the faculty and everything else. So not in a bad way, but it isn't that hard to get a job there. If you're trying to get a teaching job there, that can be a lot harder. And that requires like a teaching philosophy and a ton of documents and several interviews and stuff. So that's a lot more difficult. <laughs> yeah. And the best way to Usually go about graduate getting... degree too. I think. Yes. Yeah. You, you typically need a master's degree and 18 credit hours of at the master's level in the subject you want to teach. Um, and honestly, if you want to do that, guys, I would recommend reaching out to the, the online department chair of the program you want to work in and ask them directly. And then if they tell you to go apply, then spend the time to go apply. Joe Burton, 1629. What do you mean hackable? Does anyone want to take this one? Oh, gosh. Yeah. No, you're like our uh, glossary, our directory of terms. Me? Huh? Yeah. You, oh, hackable? What is hackable? It, it is something that we've actually had like an undue amount of conversations about, uh, especially early on, because I think it is one of those terms where like once you get used to it, it makes sense. But especially as a new viewer, it is kind of confusing. Basically, all we mean by hackable is trying to use the system that is there to try and work around and meet your needs, whether that be trying to fit a certain budget, trying to get a degree cheaply, trying to get a degree quicker so you don't have to waste your time. Maybe you already know a certain subject, try and get credit for the stuff you already know so you can move on to the stuff that you actually want to learn, um, trying to prepare for your career. Basically just like hacking out deg the degree means fitting your needs and trying to like excel above a traditional four-year degree and trying to optimize it basically. Yeah. 
Very well said. All things Brianna six one one four with our like third or fourth question from her. She was really setting us up with some good topics here. Um, she Thanks. says, "Thank you, uh, because I have been in indecisive between SNHU, Thomas Edison, and UMPI. So now I'll make a decision after I finish doing my Sophia classes." And I saw this, and I was like, "No." Brianna, it's been four months since you asked this question. I wish I had responded quicker and had more time to do so uh, because I would really recommend picking the school first before you do Sophia. Because, you know, let's take the American government, Sophia. Maybe Thomas Edison doesn't accept it. Maybe SNHU puts it in a slot where it overlaps with credit you already have. And now you've gone and done extra work and wasted that time and ostensibly that money. Not a lot of money, right? Because Sophia is very cheap and maybe not a lot of time because it doesn't have to take too long. But uh, I would definitely recommend like picking a school first before you go. Uh, Suburban LARPer, which favorite name so far, by okay. far. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. A surprise there was no mention of how ancient and janky the UMPI website is after the Charter Oak remarks, because I, I did kind of lambast Charter Oak about their website. I'll be going to UMPI, but def wish they had a SNHU quality website. The Walmart reputation of SNHU really turns me off um, about SNHU, though, he says. I think I've had conversations with each of you guys about this. At some of these colleges that we work decent. with... You think that UMPI... I for UMPI. I uh, think so. Charter Oak was horrible. So I understand what he's saying about that. Well, UPI also changed their website. So this might have been from longer ago. I think Charter Oak updated their website too. <laughs> True. They are taking advice that is long overdue, but good at least. You know, it's yeah. really cool. I was actually in a conversation with the CFO of Charter Oak um, the other day, and he was saying that he had watched one of our videos um, and it had inspired him to go and like lobby for like slightly lower tuition for for people and uh, you know i won't say too much more because i don't know how much of that was a confidential conversation but you know people are paying attention to what we're doing at college hacking and if that inspired charter oak to update their website it looks much better now i will say uh umpi though is not good yeah i it's yeah their, their lms is just um, yeah <laughs> they do so many other things well that they're allowed this uh grievance but <laughs> we gotta update the website guys Oh man, here's one for you, Lauren. Uh, Horace Brooks 1292. I had Dr. Daly as an instructor. Uh, I think at Liberty is what she's saying. Um, she is incredible. It's funny you mentioned the interdisciplinary studies degree because I have gotten that question almost every time I spoke with an employer. This was in reference to another Q&A we did where Lauren was basically saying, well, how do I explain my INDS degree to employers? And Horace is saying that you apparently were super helpful. Yay, shout out to Horace. He was one of our clients um, and he was really fun to work with. And I'm really glad that his degree worked out and he's been nothing but uh, celebratory of his experience. So we appreciate you. That's awesome. <laughs> Horace, if you want to do a, a video interview too and maybe hop up on the channel, we'd love to chat. Tim and Wendy Davis, I'm in my mid forties and I already make six figures. Oh, this is going to be a good conversation one, guys. Uh, would it be helpful or even make sense to finish my degree at this point? Would it be a waste of time or would I potentially see an income increase? I work 14 hour days, so I would like only be able to take one class. I would likely only be able to take one class at a time or CLEP exams. I might be 50 by the time I finish my degree. Would it really be helpful in the grand scheme of things? So somebody's in their mid forties. They already make six figures. They're working a lot, like 14 hours a day. Is it worth it for them to try to go and hack a degree at this point? That's a big question, especially yeah. considering they're already working 14 hours a day. Like that's pretty insane. I think six figures is a lot. It kind of depends on what they want to be doing. Like, do, do you hate your job? Do you want to change? I feel like it's more of a question of what you want to do and like the impact you want to have rather than like a financial decision. Cause since they're already making six figures, obviously they're capable of doing something of value. You could continue working whatever job you're doing now for like two more years, save up, invest, and then retire and like work part-time and like what you're actually passionate about and getting a degree could be part of that. Maybe there's a, you know, requirement to doing what you're passionate about. That, that's what I would say. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I would definitely say that the time's going to pass anyway. So I don't think that age is necessarily a part of, of the equation, or maybe it shouldn't be as much as it is. Um, I, my first reaction is definitely, more information needed because I think uh, I yeah. would have a lot of fun coaching someone like this or having, you know, a, a coaching session to talk about what makes you bring this up. Cause if you're bringing it up, then clearly it's something that you've thought about. And that could mean that it has intrinsic value to you, which makes it 
very valuable all by itself without really any other monetary reason to do it. So I think it depends on goals and values and, and the answer could very well be yes, just as much as it could be no. <laughs> yeah. Really well said. Um, and I, I want to say this real quick, cause no, I think, well, both of your answers were great, but I, I want to point out to some folks. Uh, I think I had one, like you and I know, we were talking through career potential in different majors. And I think there was one mm -hmm. rude comment that was like, you know, he's 16. What does he know? Um, but Noah basically just laid out this guy's exact problem and cut to the heart of it really, really well. Um, and then Lauren, you followed up saying something very, very similar. Um, and that's because, and I, the reason I want to point this out is that this isn't about age. Like college hacking has never been about, oh, I have to be a certain age or go spend a certain amount of time doing something to be able to be good at it. Whether you are 16 like Noah, you know, in your, you know, 20s and 30s like Lauren and I, or in your 40s and 50s like this fella is, um, college hacking like meets you where you're at and is something that anybody can truly master. And, and in your case, I would just echo what these guys have said and say that, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to keep working 14 hours? Is the field that you're in, is there like a threshold you have to hit with the bachelor's degree that then lets you get paid more? Um, there are there are a lot of questions. So yeah, sign up for a, a coaching consultation with us. Lauren will get you situated. And uh, if we need to consult anybody, we'll go ask Noah and he'll set us straight. Um, Another thing I'd recommend for this person and maybe people like them, first of all, if you have a question, feel free to ask it in the comments. We do yeah. these things. I think this is like the fifth or sixth Q and A, right? Ninth. Or is it more than that? It's ninth. ninth. So we, we've been doing this a lot. We like your questions. We like answering it. It's kind of our jam. Um, I think it's the first time I've been here. So hi, nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> but also if you have like a specific or urgent type question, sometimes it takes a couple months to make these videos. If you have like an urgent question, feel free to go and join our discord. Yes. You know, the discord is basically like a chat app and we can like individually talk with you have more like long form discussions and i'd really be interested in hearing this person uh tim and wendy davis's question or like their whole life story because i think yeah. there's some real potential here uh very unique individual yeah. so yeah uh join our discord we, we can help you there um and also consultations if you want like full-on specialized help bingo uh and to go along with that noah actually administers our discord the link to that is in the description so you can go in there we have a lot of topics and conversation areas you can pick a topic that sounds like what you're thinking about ask a question and noah lauren or i might answer or somebody else who's in a similar life situation might talk and it's just a great community um something we're going to be doing in there really really soon that i want to tell you guys about is lauren and or sorry actually in this case noah and i are going to be hosting a live Q and a in discord, it's probably going to be sometime like mid September. So we're a little bit of a ways mm -hmm. out, but if you want to stay updated for when that happens, go join the discord down below and you'll get a notification like a week in advance. You can, you know, put it on your calendars, or there's also the, the free course I mentioned down below. If you go on that, you'll also get added to our email list. You'll get the free course and then you'll get, um, notifications when we have the scheduled and you'll be able to come join us and do a live Q and a no, and I will answer your questions much quicker, quicker than Lauren. And I answer your questions. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited for that. It's going to be great. I'd love to like get some in-person experience with our community. Yeah. And, and I'll say this too, like we talk to adults a lot on this channel, but if you're like a, a teenager in high school, we would really love to have you come and join us too and answer your questions as well. Cause yeah. like, like I pointed out, college hacking is for everybody. I just There's met with a no senior on Friday who like blew my mind. I, I know so many middle-aged adults who are not as mature as this 16 year old kid I met with. He's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That I love, was really love cool. that. We've got four questions, but we're basically out of time. Um, so I'm just going to fly through these really quickly. Seek Peace 5529, does SNHU degrees hold up in the real world workforce? Yes, they do. Uh, Velt 4332, new subscriber here. I'm looking for information going back to school and finding a career that may be worth pursuing for someone over the age of 50. So happy to find your YouTube channel. It's a great question to ask on the Discord. Marcus D338, they're new. Talking about Sophia's new introduction to nutrition is an easier course. Uh, only took me around six hours and I could have gotten it done in four. Easy general education credit for a health requirement, no touchstone, solid option. Also a great free elective. Yeah, it is one of the quickest ones out there. Highly recommend that. And then David King 8046 is our last comment. And he says, oh. new drinking game, a shot whenever he says hack. <laughs> Thanks, David King. Yeah, you would be. I read uh, that a little drunk. before you said it and 
<laughs> it broke me. <laughs> <laughs> it broke me. He's going to be mighty drunk. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be quite a party in the David King household. Yeah. Well, hey, Lauren and Noah, so glad that you guys uh, were able to join me on this Tuesday evening to answer some of these questions. And thank you to everybody who sent in questions. If you do have more questions, people who are watching, college hackers, members of our, our little community of educationally entrepreneurial mindsetted people, that works, I think. Yeah, Autodidacts, something of yeah, this sort. There we go. Um, you know, Set, leave a, a question on this video. We try to answer every YouTube question. We're a little bit behind, uh, but we try to review them for the videos. We try to answer them like by replying in a text-based comment. And you know, we at the very least read every single one. So um, we'd love to, to do that and maybe get you in on, on Q&A number 10. So that's what I got. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Happy hacking.